Hey YouTube, what's up? It's CS back here with another installment, and here's my review for UFC 137, Penn vs. Diaz. Alrighty YouTube, well before I do move on, I'm going to announce my contest winner for this event. It goes for this, BJ Penn, why I fight, the belt is just an accessory. And uh, yeah, all you have to do is be subscribed and tell me who you thought was going to win the main event between BJ Penn and Nick Diaz. Of course, Nick Diaz won by unanimous decision. And uh, if you picked Nick Diaz via unanimous decision, you're obviously eligible to win this. If you were also subscribed, the winner that was picked at random was the real Dookie. So congrats, bro. And yeah, I'll contact you for uh, your shipping details and hopefully I can get this out to you ASAP. Anyways, now that that contest stuff is out of the way with, let's take a look at this. Well, 137, you know, I had fun watching it. Uh, solid event, not the greatest, uh, but, you know, it's whatever. Kind of bittersweet for me, though, because I did see some fights I liked, but, you know, people like BG Penn, Crow Cop, they walked away from the sport. Uh, kind of wish they could have walked out on top. Unfortunate, but uh, a lot of the greatest walk out losing, too, so... You know, what can you do? This fight really doesn't tarnish their legacy at all. You know, I think Crow Cop's always just going to be remembered for what he did in Pride. And I think BJ is going to be remembered for uh, mostly his highs over his lows. So, yeah, that's just my opinion on that. Uh, but since we're on that topic with BJ Penn, let's take a look at what happened with him and Nick Diaz. First off, though, all the congratulations in the world has to go to Nick Diaz. He did his thing, you know. Made BJ Penn look silly in the last two rounds. Damn, you know, I've never seen BJ Penn ever look like that um, after a fight. You know, his face was, you know, battered, tattooed. Nick Diaz did a number on him. Respect to Nick Diaz. As for BJ Penn, you know, he announced his retirement. We'll see if he actually walks away from the sport. If he does, you know, happy trails to him. Thanks for the memories. And I wish him uh, the best in uh, whatever he has going on and whatever he has going on in the future. So, you know, happy trails to BJ Penn. Hats off to him as well. But Nick Diaz, you know, he's definitely the best fighter at 170 who is a non-wrestler. Bar none. You know, he's that good. You know, flashy subs. You know, good off his back. And on the feet, you know, that pitter-patter style. Nasty. Um, solid chin. Cardio for days. The guy's a machine. You know, he really is. You know, he's definitely a handful for anyone who has lackluster sub-defense and, you know, isn't the greatest on the feet. You know, if you plan to go those areas with him and you have those traits, yeah, not good look. He's going to probably beat you. But as for this fight with BJ Penn, BJ Penn was doing just fine. You know, taking a look at his round one, uh, BJ was sticking and moving, not allowing Nick to stalk him and uh, corner him and go nuts with that pitter-patter style. And uh, because he wasn't able to do that, you know, BJ was winning around, landing more powerful shots. BJ was still able to snap his punches. And, you know, once it hit the ground, BJ even took Nick's back, got the upper hand there. He didn't finish him, though, but he still got points for effective grappling and, of course, effective striking. So I give BJ round one, 10 9. Come next round, though, BJ was tired as hell. And uh, because of that, Nick was able to stalk him. Uh, he. And BJ was doing a lot of backing up. He back up to the cage. Nick Diaz would eventually tee off on him. BJ, when he was covering up, uh, Nick would go to the body. If BJ, you know, wasn't covering up anymore, Nick would obviously go to the face. And yeah, eventually BJ just couldn't cover up anymore because he was even too tired to do that. It was kind of embarrassing. Uh, definitely at least a 10-9 round, maybe 10-8 for Nick Diaz, it's just BJ was too tired and he was borderline insignificant in round two. And round three was a continuation of that. Nick Diaz's uh, pitter powder, overwhelming style punching, just getting the best of BJ Penn. I'm not sure. I think anything could have got the best of BJ Penn after um, round one because BJ was just that tired. And, you know, I attribute that due to the fact that I didn't like his training camp. Just watching what I saw from the UFC, uh, the UFC countdown videos, you know, he was kind of lax in the training camp, in my opinion. Training with you know Matt Hughes and Pat Miletich, and they're shooting guns off and stuff. And this is like weeks out before you're supposed to face, you know, the most cardio ready opponent in the world right now, Nick Diaz. And definitely one of the best opponents in the world. And you're shooting off guns. Never really liked 
BJ's approach to training, you know, I think that he should have pushed himself every camp that he's been in. Maybe his record would be a little bit better. This guy is a legend, and he's 16, 8, and 2 or something like that. I don't know. That doesn't look like a legendary record, but uh, he's definitely going to be remembered more for his highs than his lows. Obviously, his training and cardio, you know, his Achilles heels. But, you know, BJ is nevertheless a great fighter. Uh, he got beat by a better one here in Nick Diaz. Nick Diaz is making his own legacy right now. Um, definitely the most exciting fighter in the sport right now, and Nick Diaz, in my opinion. So, uh, congratulations to Nick Diaz. Happy trails to BJ Penn. Uh, solid main event. BJ Penn went out in style. So, you know, props to BJ Penn. As for what's next for him, of course, BJ Penn's retiring. Again, happy trails to him. But Nick Diaz, apparently, Carlos Condit's going to step away from, uh, his supposed title shot against George St. Pierre. And that bout's supposed to happen, I think, maybe Super Bowl weekend. So, uh... Diaz, GSP, you know, let's see if uh, this actually goes down again. Uh, Nick thinks that GSP is scared. That's kind of funny. Um, who knows? Well, I don't know. You know, uh, I don't know what's going through GSP's head. But, uh, yeah, uh, I respect both guys. I'm cheering for Nick. I look for him to put on the show. But it's going to be hard to, considering GSP dictates the pace of the fight, whoever he faces. Except that GSP's last fight against Shields was kind of stupid. But whatever, you know, GSP, this matchup favors him, and uh, if he knows anything, he'll just take it down to the ground and not get submitted. So, I guess that's an early prediction for whenever that fight happens. But let's move on. Let's take a look at what else happened tonight. Of course, in the co-main event, we had uh, heavyweights Matt Mitrione and Czech Congo go at it. You know, I thought that Mitrione would, uh, you know, stick and move and be able to take down Congo at times. Uh... Yeah, I thought that we'd seen an improvement on uh, Matt Mitrione's wrestling. I was dead wrong. Um, he was getting taken down come round three and stuff. You know, um, Czech was doing some wall stall, doing Czech Congo MMA on the feet. Czech was uh, actually backing up a lot. And if Matt Mitrione would have thrown a few something in those first two rounds, maybe he would have won one decisively or both of them. But Matt was surprisingly gun-shy in this fight. And he paid for it because he lost via unanimous decision against Czech Congo. You know, that fight was kind of hard to watch for me. Just because, you know, I really don't think I saw the best out of either guy. Next bout, uh, Roy Nelson, heavyweight bout, of course, uh, against Mirko Filipovic, Mirko Krokop. Krokop also retired. Happy trails to him. Thanks for the memories, dude. And um, in my opinion, he's been done for a long time now. Uh, definitely does not have the same aggression he once had. I know he was also a very patient fighter back in the day, even in the K1 days. But honestly, like, you have to throw something at him before he throws something at you now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if not, he's just going to stand there. It's kind of sad. But he didn't look half bad this time. You know, he definitely impressed me for the first two rounds. I thought he'd look worse. And he didn't look great at all, to be honest. But def definitely neither Roy Nelson. Uh, Roy Nelson, who, you know, he was able to get takedowns here and there. and um, But really, not much significant offense until round three, where he got Krokop down to the ground and just uh, mounted him and wore for a TKO. So, nice looking win for Roy Nelson. What's next for him? Why not check Congo? You know, I'd like to see that fight. Would be nice. We'll see. Next bout. Oh, yeah, and get happy trails to Krokop, dude's a legend. Next off, uh, what else was in the main card? Oh, yeah, Jeff Curran, Scott Jorgensen. Jeff Curran, for me, is just a tough dude with decent jiu-jitsu. I said that in my uh, my prediction video. There was no chance he was being Scott Jorgensen. Scott Jorgensen, more powerful, explosive, better wrestler, better hands. He was not dropping that fight. And, yeah, he told... Uh, Jeff Kern for a unanimous decision victory. Nice looking win for uh, Scott Jorgensen. What's next for him? Why not the winner of Brad Pickett and Henan Burrell next card? I'd like to see that. Again, I know Brad Pickett already lost to uh, Scott Jorgensen, but I think that would be a good fight. Again. Next next bout was Hatsu Hioki, George Roop. Of course, Hioki making his uh, debut. Uh... In my opinion, Hioki took that two rounds to one. You know, I gave him round one for uh, his top control. In round two, he definitely took 
And round three, you know, Rook opened up a lot more. Hiyoki was not very significant when coming round three. And, uh, you know, Rook got him that round. But I I don't know. I was kind of surprised that uh, Judge gave it 29-28 to Rook. Because in round one, he wasn't... Like, I thought what Hiyoki did in terms of offense was more significant than what Rook did. Because they're kind of stand, stagnant on the feet. Maybe Rook was edging him. But I thought that uh, Hiyoki's... Uh, you know, superior top control once it hit the ground was um, enough to decisively get him that round. I guess it wasn't. Um, I don't know. Uh, Hiyoki did not look like um, Hiyoki of uh, old, you know, where I'm usually accustomed to seeing this guy just pick away at opponents. He had a difficult time dealing with uh, the range of Rook. I know Hiyoki himself only had a one-inch reach advantage. Um, usually he's accustomed to having more. I know George Rook was taller. So, yeah, the guy was just harder to hit than what he's accustomed to. He's usually accustomed to facing, you know, midgets. So, you know, Hioki, hopefully he comes around next fight. Um, what's next for him? He's obviously not getting a title shot with Chad Mendes in, uh, you know, in line for Jose Aldo. Hatsu Hioki, who's in featherweight? You know, that, that division's so depleted, it's ridiculous. I wouldn't mind seeing Hatsu Hioki versus... Um, the winner of Mark Holm, big chance on Young. I think that would be a good fight. Why not? We'll see. But uh, hats off to Hatsu Yoki. He's a Japanese MMA still alive. I hope it is because from what I saw, if he's the last guy, you know, carrying the flag for that shit, damn, they got some work to do because uh, he has some work to do himself. Next bout, um, Cowboy Cerrone. Dennis Seaver, Cowboy, whooped his ass. You know, better everywhere, I thought. You know, I was thoroughly stunned whenever said someone said Seaver's going to win this via unanimous decision or TKO or something crazy like that. No, you know, Seaver does not have very good power. He's a technical striker whose um, base is in kicks. You know, he was just not winning against a more ranger opponent in Cerrone, who I thought had better power, who I thought had a better ground game and has a reach, you know. Seaver, definitely a bad matchup for him. Whenever he faces a better striker, he loses. He'll beat, you know, Matt Wyman. He'll beat George Sauteropoulos. But a better striker like Ross Pearson or um, or Don Cerrone or Melvin Gillard, he's just going to lose. That's what happened. Next bout, uh, Bart Palaszewski, Tyson Griffin. Tyson Griffin, out. Out. Now, um, you miss weight and you're not fighting to your, um, your uh, strengths. You're a wrestler. Who likes to throw hands? No, you should be just a wrestler and just a wrestler. Um, you know, don't worry about laying and praying on someone. You should do it more often, and you'd have a better record if you did. You know, why are you striking with Gomi? Like, you give Gomi a chance to win if you strike with him. And why would you strike with Bar Palajewski? That guy's a good striker. That guy took Anthony Pettis to decision on the feet and edged him. Although I didn't think he won that fight. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you're so much better than this guy in one area, and you didn't bother beating him there. No, not bothering going for a single takedown. You know what? Uh, you never learn, and you've got to go. I know you've had, like, fight, fight of the nights and stuff, but still, you know, it's just, it's kind of painful to watch. Just because, give that wrestling ability to, like, I don't know, like, to Tiago Alves, that would make sense. <laughs> because clearly he just likes to throw hands, you know. Kind of unfortunate. Uh, now in the preliminary card, Brandon Vera. Damn, you narrowly lost that shit. Uh, I can't believe he didn't even wince when uh, Elliot Marshall broke his arm with the armbar. Uh, he didn't scream at all. You know, Brandon's a trooper. You know, of course he had just w one's round and two with uh, just being the better striker. But... You know, round three, he's a trooper. Holy shit. Like, that looked like, that looked pretty nasty. But uh, what's next for uh, Brandon Vera? I don't mind a rematch with, like, Christoph Zajinski, someone like that. I don't know. Maybe the winner of Bonner Kingsbury, I think, would make sense. Mm, and then the uh, lo loser of this fight, Elliot Marshall, I think he should face Ricardo Romero. Loser leaves home. I think that would make sense. Uh, also on the card was Clifford Starks, Justin Jacoby, good win for Clifford Starks. 
uh, Ramsey Najem over Danny Downs. Well, Danny Downs cannot have... He, he can't offense, so that's unfortunate. And because of that, he's got to go. Ramsey Najem tooled him. And other fight, Carmel, you know, big ups to Carmel. GSP said he's something special. He really says that about someone. Uh, last time he did was Roy McDonald. I guess he meant it because apparently uh, Carmel looked very really good. I didn't see those uh, those three fights I just mentioned just now. So if you guys want to enlighten me on those, please do. So yeah, guys, that about does it for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my event and hopefully the review as well. Again, hats off to Nick Diaz for beating BJ Penn and happy trails to BJ Penn. Y'all got to remember, guys, BJ Penn was born into wealth in Hawaii. He doesn't feel pressured to fight like a lot of these other guys who you know, need to fight because they can't exactly do anything else. This guy made a decision to fight and he's beating guys more desperate than he is. So respect to BJ Penn. Again, hats off to Nick Diaz and happy trails to Mirko Filipovic as well. The guy's a K1 legend and pride legend. And uh, hopefully he's remembered for his stints there and not the UFC because he was complete ass here. So yeah, again, that about does it for me. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the review again. I will see you for a 138 prediction show. Tune into that. I have a contest for that as well. And yeah, I guess that about does it. Thank you for all the support once again. My links are in the description below if you're interested. And yeah, take care. Thank you for all the support.